Hey guys, and welcome to the second part of the tutorial on how to make a toy car. Um, today we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, first off, we're going to optimize this car. Right now it's clean, but it's not very neat. Um, second thing we're going to do is we're going to combine everything and get rid of these nasty little holes in there. And then we're going to UV texture it. Uh, once that is done, I'm going to texture it inside Substance Painter. Uh, I know there have been a lot of questions about it, so I'm going to do that as well. And finally, we're going to import it with textures and all inside Unity 5 and see what it looks like. So first thing I'm going to do is optimize the car. Right now it's clean-ish. But the um, the art of making game art is that every edge and edge loop should have, should have its purpose. And they should all add something to the shape of the object. For example, when you look at this loop here, um, it it helps here in the nose section and a little bit here. But I mean, this part here, this doesn't add anything, so we can delete it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do though is change the shape a little bit more. Um, right now, we have some vertices here that don't do anything, so I'm going to use them to make it more rounder. So I'm going to grab these here, and I'm going to try to get the faces to be roughly the same size, something like this much better and now we're gonna clean it up so I'm gonna grab my modeling toolkit and I'm gonna start here at the front so first thing I'm gonna get rid of is this edge loop here um, by simply creating a triangle from this point to that point and on the back side we're gonna do the same but this in this case we're gonna go well we have two options oh, oh, my mouse is freaking out we can go from this one to there or all the way down it doesn't really matter to be honest which one you use but I'm just gonna go I'm gonna go down why not and then I'm gonna delete this part uh, when you delete edge loops it's very important that you do it the right way by deleting edge and vertex um, if you just delete them but just you can see there are still vertices left which creates angons so make sure that if you delete them let you use Control delete or command delete to get rid of all the vertices as well you can check by pressing 3 nice and clean okay so same goes for this one I'm gonna create another triangle here and up all the way in the back I'm gonna do the same thing but this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up and double click it and Control delete much better okay next part I'm gonna use this edge over here and a little, little bit more curves. I'm gonna add a triangle right over there so I can delete this. Control delete. Much better. Okay, so this edge it adds to the shape here, but the rest of it doesn't it doesn't do anything at all, so I'm gonna get rid of it entirely. Or most of it. So I'm gonna gonna go mm, down there. And I'm gonna delete this part. Same thing for this one. Can we say it adds something? Not really. So I'm gonna create a triangle downstairs. Oh, from here to there. And I'm gonna delete this part. Does it, does it change something? Uh, actually, it did. We need this edge loop here for the actual shape. So I'm gonna cut it. There. There we go. That's much better. Let's see, can we do something else? Okay. The bottom side. Um, there's a very simple rule. If you don't see it, don't model it or don't have it visible. So I'm gonna just delete most faces here since we don't even see them or will ever see them. So I'm gonna delete some. Uh, I'm, st I'm still gonna keep a few so uh, if the camera might come a bit lower than we think it might then there's still something there um, okay um, this edge loop is a bit different same for this one um, since it adds a lot to the shape around here at the uh, sitting area I don't know what's called sitting thingy uh, and up here but this part in the middle it doesn't do anything so I'm gonna create a triangle once more I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go 
there and I'm con just gonna delete them and this one better it's not perfect uh, we can get rid of this one as well so I'm gonna go uh, this way I'm just gonna delete them keep in mind though this part over here uh, we got an angle on right now so I'm gonna do these faces anyway so get rid of them and same thing here um, let's create a triangle over there delete them and same thing here uh, we might even do this no we can't really so and something like that um, so this one we can delete that one and we can't delete this one though okay let's just leave it like that and maybe this one so let's get rid of it doesn't doesn't learn that much but okay it's pretty clean right now so let's see how much difference we have we just got got rid of over uh, five four two two thousand I think two thousand triangles uh, the biggest triangle counter that we have are the tires right now you can see here when I selected the tires alone are uh, forty eight hundred that's massive but we can survive we can survive so it's pretty okay right now looks pretty clean we can change this one as well still because this edge here doesn't do anything neither for neither does this one so I'm gonna just delete them get rid of them done and I'm gonna add a triangle there so I can delete the outer edge loop so delete this and add a triangle I mean you can you can see that the difference is not that massive but it's still a difference so that's pretty much why we do it so we're doing the same thing here as well so I'm gonna go for it this time I'm gonna go click the inner edge loop oh not like that so we can do this one That should be there. Off to the side, there we go. And I'm gonna create another triangle right here. And this one to this one. And delete. That is pretty nice and clean. I'm gonna save it perfect okay so next part is that we're going to combine all the parts that we've instance so these two and these two and these two so I, I'm gonna start with the card itself so I'm gonna select both of them and I'm gonna hit shift I so we just have this part selected and I'm, I'm gonna grab the both and then I'm gonna go to mesh and then hit combine what it does is that it turns it into one single mesh as you can see here uh, okay I'm gonna go to our vertex mode and I'm just gonna grab all the vertices in the middle that were just part of the actual uh, well middle part so, and then I'm gonna to edit mesh and I'm gonna hit merge components where it does well it just merges the vertices that we've selected and by clicking three on your keyboard you can see what the difference is so right now this part is perfect but here you can see this very awkward little Bump. So I'm gonna go vertex. And I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that there are some vertices that are not connected. I'm gonna guess this one. So I'm gonna select them, merge components, and see. You can see it actually being solved right now. So I'm gonna do this as well. That looks pretty nice. Okay, go to one. Go ahead, save. Um, if if you're wondering about this hard harsh line in the middle right here, uh, that makes sense because with those not, uh, normals on uh, smooth so I'm gonna go to my normals soften edge and they're gone as you can see 
so let's do this front part here um, one thing to keep in mind is that when you are merging components uh, or combining objects that the faces in the middle where the two parts meet that they should be deleted and in this case I forgot them so I'm gonna delete them right now otherwise you can't merge the components together so I'm gonna select both of them I'm gonna go to my mesh combine them once more shift I it's a bit easier and I'm gonna go grab all the vertices in the middle edit match merge components hit three on the keyboard see if they are actually connected they are done it's the same part here I'm gonna check if the faces are still there in this case they are so I'm gonna delete them grab them both mesh combine vertex mode grab all the vertices and edit mesh merge check it perfect save it looks pretty okay done so next part are the wheels uh, the wheels are a bit different because they are duplicate instances of each other so for example if we now hit combine I'll show what happens we lose them all except for one so that's not really helpful so I'm gonna go to my window outliner I'm gonna select all the groups that we have right now so all the select uh, groups which all contain two objects the actual tire and the rim so when I have them selected I'm gonna go to my modify and convert and then hit oh, wait for it, instance to object what it does that it changes the instances into a unique object which is exactly what we need and then I'm gonna select my tires and rims well maybe not rims I'm gonna do this separately so tires and then I'm gonna go to my mesh combine and now see there's still four tires same thing for the for the rims I'm gonna select them all mesh and then combine and then I'm gonna select everything together and I'm gonna hit combine so now we have just one mesh as you can see cool when I go to my channel box editor uh, you can see in in the input selection here we got a massive list of thingies um, this is my mesh history so every action that I have done to my mesh can be found right here uh, it can be helpful but it's also a bit of a pain in the ass because uh, it can really slow down Maya um, when you're done with your model and you're like okay, this is perfect they, then you need to delete the history by going to edit and delete by type history is now nice and clean um, this says up a lot of speed and in the viewport and also for example when you're making a character and you've uh, created a uh, bone structure for it um, when you move the joints uh, Maya will go th will go through the entire history for every single action that you do so it's it really slows down Maya um, so keep this in mind delete history when you're done just just get rid of it I'm gonna save it on a different name I'm gonna call this toys toy car UV because we're gonna UV this little sucker so when you're going to UV you need to ask yourself one question what kind of shape is my object in this case the car itself is a box the tires are cylinder uh, the rims may be cylinder as well and this is a box and these spoilers are both box so you can do it in several ways you can just go to create UVs and then hit uh, automatic mapping and then go by texture editor and then you get this good luck this is awful so we're not gonna do it like this uh, you can do it like this but it will take you forever so let's not do that so I'm gonna hit undo and I'm gonna do my faces I'm just gonna select my card first but just double clicking on my car you get all the faces selected I'm gonna go to create automatic mapping when I look at it now this is not just a car this looks pretty okay I'm gonna grab a tire, uh, tire. I'm gonna go to create and then cylindrical mapping make sure that's on the correct axis right now it's pointing upwards so it's really not that helpful so I'm gonna go to my attribute editor and then pull it out to project one and I'm just gonna turn it I think it's probably not oh, not that one this one nope I even got the wrong object select, so that's not really helpful. This one. 
90th thing. We'll find out soon enough. So let's check it. And that's a negative. And that's not really helpful. I'm gonna do everything. What do I do? Okay. Grab the tire again. Create UVs. Statical mapping. This one. And I'm gonna check 90. Nope. 90. Nope. All 90 and 90. Nope. 90. <laughs> you can see it's a bit of a, well, a bit of annoying, but. Yep, there it is. So the Z X is 90. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Again, create your V, cynical mapping. Set the Z to 90. Same here. Create your Vs. 90. And create your Vs. 90s. Okay, I'm gonna select my spoiler here and I'm gonna create automatic mapping. Same for this one, automatic mapping. And these bad boys, uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm just gonna go for the cylindrical mapping. So this one, make sure I set to 90 again. Same here. Nope, it's spherical. Oh, this one. 90 and this one. 90. Cool. So let's open it up in the UV editor. And we get this. Yeah. So I'm just gonna grab a shell with this button over here. This is move shell. I'm just gonna grab it. And I'm gonna pull everything outside. So everything nice and spaced out. Just start grabbing things. Okay. The reason why I do this so I'll come to that. Well it's pretty obvious, pretty simple. Um this is the space that we have to work in, uh, 0 to 1. So everything has to fit inside that tiny little square. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm just going to get rid of everything inside that square. So make it nice and clean. There you go. So by the looks of it, this is the top of my car. It's pretty obvious, I think. So let's check it, make sure. Yep, top of my car. So let's start out with, with that one. First I'm going to turn this one off and this one on. Okay, so I go to my edge and I make sure that you're, I'm not inside this tool of here. So I'm going to hit Q, which exits the move shell. I'm just going to select an edge and I'm going to hit move and zoom. And I'm going to see what happens. Okay, so we got this part here, this is the side of the car, which is this part of here, I think. This looks pretty good, but right now these edges aren't connected. You can see it over here when I zoom in all the way. So I have to make sure that these are connected as well. So I'm going to select this edge again and I'm going to hit move and zoom. And I'm going to the opposite side as well. So these two move and zoom. Oh, this one. Cool. Jump like this. So how do you know that this is working? Well, I will show you. So I'm going to go to my object over here. I'm going to go to my material attributes. Material attributes. And in my Lambert, I'm going to add a checker box, this one over here. And I'm going to turn on the shading and viewport. And I'm going to switch to viewport 2.0, which will make them nice and sharp. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my texture, checker 1, and then place to the texture. I'm going to up this number over here in the repeat UVs to like 25 or 25. So we get a nice looking checkerboard. Uh, the goal is that everything or that every square is actually perfectly square. That's the trick of UV mapping. Um, it's a long, tedious pro uh, process, but it's an essential skill of being a 3D artist. Right now, it looks really cool because everything is really nice and clean and nice, evenly, sp evenly spaced out, but it's a giant mess, as you can see. So, we have to fix it really bad. So, first thing, I can see there's a massive hole in here, so I'm going to grab all the edges. I'm going to hit move and zoom. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hit G. Last action. This should be the window. You can see that this is a bit bit uh, stretched. The squares are, not, are no longer squares. You can fix that by going to UV. Right click UV. 
And I'm gonna select both of them. I'm just gonna scale them. I'm gonna see what happens when I make them bigger. Nope. I'm gonna make it smaller. That looks fine. Then this part is fixed, but then this part here is stretched. So I need to fix that as well. So I'm gonna grab these three. I'm gonna scale them inwards again. So this is the part is a little bit less stretched. Um, getting this perfect is, I almost say, nearly impossible. <laughs> um, can be done, of course, but for now, I'm gonna. I think this is pretty okay. So let's continue with the cars. I'm gonna grab my edge again. I'm gonna grab these edges, and I'm just gonna hit both so and see what happens. Okay, so we got a back side of the car. Let's merge these two as well. It's a bit nicer. There you go. Uh, looks pretty okay. Actually, looks pretty good so far. Nice. Let's see what's what happens when we click here. Oh, we got an extra line, so I'm gonna grab all of them, and I'm gonna hit move in soon. I'm gonna see what this part is, so I'm gonna click face. I'm gonna zoom in. That's the bottom side of the car. If this part is stretched out, I really don't care, because chance of someone seeing it is slim, so I'm not gonna be that bothered about it. So, but I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm grab all the edges here. And I'm gonna hit move and zoom. Might as well be a bit more precise. This one here, and this one there, and this one right there. Sweet. Uh, you can see here that this part ends here very awkwardly. So that means that there are still faces around here. So I'm gonna check it. Just gonna click here. Oh, and you see that this happens. So it's now moved to the actual body of the car. Um, sounds like a good idea probably is but then you get this very 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 nasty stretched out part um, you can fix it of course by just moving all the vertices or the, the UV vertices I have to say uh, but it's a bit of a hassle what you can do though I'm gonna show you a trick I'm gonna gra grab this part of here I'm gonna hit this button over here which is the unfold selected UVs and it's gonna unfold it for me as you can see it will make everything nice and e evenly squared but it's now very Organic, I don't want to say, so I'm gonna undo it. Um, I'm just gonna continue on for a moment, just getting everything connected to each other. So, this part here, this part here, this one as well, and uh, I guess this part as well. Okay, Let's see what happens here. Oh, that's nice. Let's move that one as well. Oh, that looks good. So, I'm gonna grab these, and then we get to the tail lights, uh, the front lights, headlights. I'm just gonna sew them together in this one as well. I'm just gonna keep on pressing G on my keyboard. So I think I got everything done. Oh, let's not do that. This one. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, that's nasty. Okay, let's hit G one more time. That part and this part. Looking pretty okay so far. Let's see what happens now when we hit the unfold. You get a nice looking shape. Uh, all the squares are now actual squares. But texturing this might be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Because, for example, if you have to do this in Photoshop, you have to follow these curves perfectly for the in, in order to make the texture follow the shape of the car. Um, can be done, of course. But it can be a bit of a hassle. But in this case, I'm gonna do it in, in Substance Painter, so I'm not that bothered. So I'm just gonna continue on. Oh, I'm gonna hit F. So, the object. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit further and then make sure that I'm not in this tool anymore. So, Edge Mode, and I'm just gonna click Move and Sue, this one as well. See what happens there. Okay, that's pretty okay. Same here, same here. Maybe hit it one more time. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind this looking pretty okay. Okay, let's see what happens if we press the button here. Oh, that works. Yeah, so when that, when you see this, the color change because I've got this turned on. That means that, that there is a form of overlapping. That one edge, this edge, this actual edge that's currently going under a different face, uh, 
that's bad. You kind of want to avoid it. So I'm going to move this one down to avoid that. I'm going to do the same thing here. Something there. Nope. Nope. Okay. And I'm going to click it again. I'm just going to hit on on fold. And nice and clean. So let's go to the back side. And I'm going to click on this edge. I'm going to guess that this edge will connect to this one. Magic. And same here. And this part. And I'm going to click it on again and hit on fold. Awesome. Um, as you can see, the everything is really nice and evenly spaced, but it's very distorted. It's extremely distorted, as a matter of fact. So um, you can fix, it, of course, by just changing, make everything straight, like this, and then changing this one as well, and then just keep on going and going and going. Uh, like for example, so see so you can now actually see that the squares are starting to line up. There's also a different way of doing that. Um, I'm going to show you. For example, when I want these all these first pieces to be on exactly one line, I'm going to select the UV vertices and I'm going to click on this one or this one, which will make them line up perfectly, either down or up. So if I click on this one, it it will. Uh, make the line based on the highest vertex or uh, UV vertex in this case this one so everything will be lined out according to that one if I press this one it will be the lowest so based on that one you can see this actually look pretty okay so if if you texture it right now and the, and the texture is straight like so it will actually curve up around this edge um, which is pretty okay it's not that bad to be honest um, but like I said, I'm gonna do it in a different program and not Photoshop, so I'm not that bothered with it. So I'm gonna leave it like that and I'm just gonna go into the headlights here in this part over here. I'm just gonna click oh edge mode and I'm just gonna click on it and see what happens. So bingo. Let's grab them, hit on fold one more time. It's really nasty. Um if it's red that it means that their their face is overlapping. Which is really bad, so let's not do that. So I'm gonna go on edge mode, I'm gonna grab them all and just gonna hit and then unfold them and see, nice and perfect. So other way other side as well. So I'm gonna grab all the edges. I'm gonna do it one more time, and then I'm just gonna hit unfold and wait. Sweet. Um, is this a good good way of UVing? Um, yes and no. Uh, this approach is is very organic. Uh, for example, for a house that uh, that you have to make, that's not really that helpful. But that also depends on what kind of, of software you're going to use. In this case, Simpson Spader, so I don't care that much right now. So I'm gonna keep it like this. I'm gonna turn it around, nice and straight. Okay. I'm just gonna place it here. So well, let's see what else we have. As you see, it's already starting to look pretty clean, the entire UV space, except for this part over here, which is still a giant mess. But we'll get to that. So let's grab, let's say, for example, this bad boy over here, which is a tire. I'm just gonna hit unfold one time and see what happens. And you get, I don't know what I get. I get this. Well, this is very awkward. The problem is, Right now it's 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 red, so it's overlapping, which I really don't want to have. So I'm gonna go to my edge inside my viewport itself. I'm gonna click on this edge over here, all the way around, and I'm gonna in go inside the viewport or the uh, texture, the view texture. I'm gonna hit on the separate. So I I'm gonna make a cut based on that, and I'm gonna try to do the same thing inside this part here, this part here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Click. So they're now turned into different UV islands, as you can see. So we got now the actual tire. This part is actually looking really damn good. And we got the inside, which is this part over here. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna hit unfold. There you go. Sweet. So same thing for this tire as well, so I'm gonna grab it, which one is it? The one on the back. 
I'm going to go to my edge mode, I'm going to click on this edge here, double click it. I'm going to hit cut. I'm going to go to my inside. If I can find it somewhere in this mess. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, there it is, this one. Select it, yep. and now I'm going to hit cut. Hit unfold. Perfect. Gonna find his face where it is. Oh, it's not really that perfect actually. Huh. Oh, it's a different. <laughs> it's a different car bubble. Oops. Oh, it's actually really pretty. Huh. It works as well. So I'm gonna grab a different one. So I'm gonna grab this one. Well, by exit, I just realized I could do it differently as well. So I'm gonna go to my edge and I'm gonna click on this one. I'm just gonna hit. Cut, I'm gonna grab the entire island and gonna hit unfold. Awesome. That works surprisingly well. I think we have one left. That would be this one. So I'm gonna find it where this on my there it is. So edge mode one more time. Cut island mode and unfold. I think this one, oh, that's actually part of the rim. Okay. Close enough. Okay, what else is left? We have this object over here, which is the front spoiler. Part of it as well. And, well, let's just hit edge mode and just select an object like this edge over here and just gonna see what happens. Okay. That is good, so I'm gonna grab all the edges and I'm just gonna select them. They're nice. They're now attached to it. I'm gonna grab this part over here. Same thing. Okay, that helps as well. So what happens if we do this? That part's get attached. I'm gonna unfold it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit bigger. Okay, that is actually pretty decent. So I got an edge here, so what happens there? Okay, let's get in, but let's not do that. Ooh. That was funky. I hit unfold. Hmm. Let's grab these edges and see what happens then. Okay. Same here. And one more time. Yeah, looks pretty okay. Let's see if there's something left. Let's grab this one. What happens here? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Then we have this one. I'm guessing this is the the back spoiler. I think. Or not? Oh, this this part here. I'm gonna hit on unfold. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further. Yeah, let's not. So that's the entire, okay. So we need to make an edge cut here, so I'm gonna grab these ones. Cut, grab the island, and hit one fold. I should fix it. Or not. Holy crap, that's a mess. Let's try one more time. Yeah, that's not gonna work. As it is right now, it's not that bad. But there is some overlap to it, so I don't really, I don't really like that part. So let's see what this face is. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna be lazy. I'm just gonna leave it like this. I, I am gonna grab this this over here though because it's really way in the back so let's move it in same for this one let's move it in so we've got a lot of stuff left here uh, which is the I guess in the uh, the end spoiler so I'm gonna grab it this part as well let's just grab an edge here and just hit 
Okay. That happens, so I'm gonna grab them all. I'm gonna hit merge this one as well. Let's just do it like this. Let's just be dirty. Grab it, unfold it, and look at it, and it looks pretty damn good. So this part, this part here is a bit bluish. I'm gonna grab it. There you go. Let's grab these. See what happens. Oh, let's not do that. Let's grab this part here and whoop. Same here. I'm gonna grab the island. Yeah, this is awkward. Let's grab the ins. Don't. Holy really crap. <laughs> Let's not do that. That's really, really bad. Let's undo it. Okay, let's keep it like this. Let's grab this part over here. See what happens when we. F of, uh, see, that's much better. It's not that extreme. Move a little bit. Okay, so that's inside. Let's see what happens here. Over here, same. It gets moved all the way. Yeah, that's not. And the same thing with this one. So merge them, merge. So the leaves, okay. Okay. This looks pretty okay. So now, right now, we got everything UV'd out. And uh, now comes this the part, the fun part of getting everything to fit inside this tiny looking, this tiny little square. So I'm gonna right click on my unfold. I'm gonna turn on pack. I think by default it's it is turned on. So I'm gonna hit it, and it's and my is gonna pack it for me. Nice and easy. But now comes the question. Well, now comes the puzzle. So this this is the body of the car, um, which is the biggest. So the UV island should also be the biggest, because it because it needs the more uh, the more the most detail. I'm, I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna blow it up. The simple rule is: the bigger the the island is, the more detail you can put it in. Makes sense. So I'm gonna move it to the side um, your UV your UVs have to stay within this square you can you cannot go outside of it so I'm gonna place it as close as I can to the actual edges same here there you go then I'm just gonna pack it in I'm gonna grab this one maybe a little bit smaller this one smaller as well uh, maybe something like this And just gonna try to get everything to fit inside this tiny little square. So I'm gonna grab this one, scale it down. This one as well, scale it down. Okay. Let's grab the both and move them up. You can also also not overlap uh, UV ions, so I have to make sure that they. There's some space in between. So this looks pretty okay. So I'm gonna grab maybe this one. This fits. Maybe this fits as well. Uh, maybe. Can I make this fit? I cannot. So let's make it a little bit smaller. Right now it's sticking out, which we really do not want to have. So I'm gonna. See if I can a little bit better. Uh, no, actually, no. We have to scale it down. There you go. And this one, I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees. Yep. And then this one, same here. I'm gonna rotate it, scale it, and make it fit. 
Wait, that one there. This also there. Okay. This looks pretty okay right now, so we can now actually start making things a little bit bigger and make it better. So I'm gonna grab this one first, I'm gonna scale up, move it a little bit to the side. This one is a little bigger. Perfect. These two can't really get any bigger, maybe a little bit. Actually, I quite like it like this. Cool, let's see what it looks like. Nice and squared. Okay. So I'm, again, I'm going to delete my history. So it's just one model with nothing more, but no history involved. Um, if you were to do this in Photoshop, you have to go to your texture editor and then go to polygons and then UV snapshot and then pick a size like for like say 2048. Then hit OK. Uh, it will be stored as a, in this case a darker image. I'm gonna show it. So what happens? So I'm gonna hit OK, and it's now stored. Think my images, and then you get something that looks like this. And now you can paint over it in Photoshop, and it will actually be painted on your model. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to use Simpsons Painter. And in order to do that, I'm gonna show you a couple of well hacks. I will say. So. Well, I'm just going to show it easier. So I'm going to grab this part of the car, this part here. I'm going to give it a different material. So I'm going to sign it a blend. Same here. Different materials. Blend this one as well. And so for the rims. Uh, what happens in Substance Painter is that it, it will look at the shaders attached to certain faces and divide the model up in, in the program itself. So I'm going to export it as, as FBX. So I'm going to call it Toy Car. Let's put the maps, it's fine because uh, it can't export the actual checker box, which is fine. So then I'm going to start up Substance Painter. And uh, for those who don't know, don't know it, it's a really cool program. Uh, it's really helpful as well, and it will really uh, make textures look better. <laughs> Just put it like that. So I'm gonna check my toy box, and I'm gonna hit OK. And this is my toy box, and everything you can see here is now been separated. Um, ideally, I've, I would have given it names. That would have even be better. Well, I don't know. We, we can't have it all, right? So I'm gonna start with Lambert One, which is my car body. I'm gonna check it and I'm gonna add a fill layer and I'm gonna pick wood painted why not it will now actually place a texture on the model uh, I don't like it let's make wood American cool I'm going to up the scale and maybe rotate it oh rotate so it looks a bit cooler yeah. I don't know. Let's say something like this. This looks pretty okay. Not perfect, but it looks pretty funky. Uh, you got you got your basic parameters here that you can set. So uh, let's see. Let's maybe change the color a little bit lighter. Or not? Maybe. Ooh, cool. Ooh. I like that. I like that. Let's say maybe some bit more knots. Or no knots, no knots, and less fibers. That looks pretty okay. Do we want height? Uh, we probably want height, not as much. So height range, a little bit less. Awesome. Looks pretty cool. So let's create a new. Let's go to my hood thingy. I'm gonna create a new fill layer. I'm gonna pick something like um, titanium or maybe steel no 
gold. Oh, we want that one. That looks really wrong, so let's not do that. So maybe some nickel, no. Or just color paint. Yeah, that looks weird. Let's change the height. Let's have no height at all. It's pretty okay, so let's go to my tires. New fill layer, I'm gonna choose rubber. Nice and easy. I think these are my, yep, so I'm gonna go new fill layer. I'm gonna go for something like metal steel. Just looks badass, or metal titanium. Hmm, plastic? No. Aluminium? Nope, car paint. Yep. I'm gonna pick. black maybe change the scale a little bit because it's not really big so I'm going to scale something like that sweet and then I'm gonna go for my rims this one and I'm gonna pick something very shiny like say maybe this one oh maybe like fill layer first that shiny Vroom vroom, it looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna hide everything except for my car. Car body, so I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna add a layer. I'm gonna use the dirt tool and I'm just gonna add a little bit, little bit of dirt to it. Right now it's really clean, I don't like it, so I'm gonna hope first, wait for it. Get, get rid of my substance material and I'm gonna pick a color, brownish, blackish, and I'm just gonna paint on it. Um, if you can tell it right now, it's really helpful. I'm just gonna paint some dirt on it. Right, like, like this. Maybe here as well. The back side a little bit more dirtier. Maybe some slight subtle around the edges maybe. Mm, why not? And inside the lights. Um, I will give you a give a full tutorial on Substance Painter. Uh, this is just more li like an introduction on what it can do. Well, this is pretty much the basics of it, uh, but it will happen once I have more a bit more time. So I'm gonna head everything back right now, and I'm just gonna call it a day. I'm gonna save this all. I'm gonna save all the texture maps. Well, I'm gonna show you first. So everything right now is saved on one single you can actually combine them all into one single texture map which is exactly what i'm going to do so i'm gonna go to my oh 3d view i'm gonna export all channels you can actually click on it i'm gonna go for oh unity 5 standard metallic which is oh this one i'm gonna pick that one or yeah, metallic. I'm gonna pick my export folder. Let's say it's in oh, documents. I'm gonna save it here in the images folder and I'm gonna set it to JPEG 8 bits. Um, having more than 8 bits is pretty useless, so I'm, then I'm just gonna hit export and hope it doesn't crash. It doesn't. Perfect, so I'm gonna check here. And now you got them all in an image you can actually see oh you could have seen the uh, for example the Lambert one this is the texture um, they're all now combined into, into different um, texture maps which you need to fix of course so I'm gonna grab them all and I'm gonna open up uh, Photoshop I'm gonna import the UV map that we exported from Photoshop, uh, from Maya, sorry. And I'm gonna pick my Albedo. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. 
I'm just gonna load them in Photoshop. Oh, this transparency actually not that helpful. Oh. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna put it in there. It's, it's a little bit tiny compared to the other one, so I'm gonna make this one tiny as well. So 1024 by 1024. Paste it in there and it should actually fit right over the UV map. I think it doesn't do that for some reason. Or does it? It does perfectly. So then I'm gonna grab my then one that was the the part there, so I'm gonna grab it. Grab it all. Oh and this one and I'm just gonna paste it in there. I'm gonna show you a trick, so I'm gonna grab my UV map, duplicate it, put it on top, invert it, and multiply it so you can see the actual shape. There we go. So I know that the hood car was here, uh, which you then have to have to delete. It's a bit of annoying, but it works really well once you get the hang of it. Um, this is a bit of well. I'll show you what happens. So you have to delete everything except for the ports that you need. It's a bit, bit more of a hassle. Uh, but this gives you a bit more control over the uh, shaders inside uh, Substance Painter. Of course you can do it the other way around as well. So you can grab them all side material and side one material through it. I'll show you that way as method as well. So now I'm just going to export it again. Uh, as FBX. I'm gonna create a new file, new discard, and toy car. There it goes. So now we just have one shader, which isn't that bad. Um, just a bit different. So I'm gonna grab my wood again, wood American. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Um, and then I'll show you some different tricks as well. For so I'm gonna leave the car as well because it's not that bad. So first thing I'm going to do is this part here, so I'm going to create a new fill layer and then again I'm going to pick my core paint if I can find it, core paint, core paint, core paint, there it is. I'm just going to fill it, there you go. Um, and then I'm going to create a mask, a black mask, and then I'm going to hit the project geometry, it should be, oh, if I can find it again, this one. I have a set to faces and then white. I'm just gonna grab them all. It's um, masking based on face selection. It's really, really sexy actually. So, done. I'm gonna create a new fill layer. This time with rubber. Rubber. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a mask for it, a black mask. And I'm just gonna create this time this one. So, I'm gonna create this one. Oh, there it is. This one and this one. Done. I'm gonna create a new one. Let's go for uniform Titanic or what I say even uniform this pure or something. Um do you like it? No, let's pick this one. Again, mask. That one, that one. Mm-hmm. Last one, but not least, of course, and uh, that's I did we had paint steel. Ah oh, it's just mm, yeah, let's go for car paint again. But this time make it black, up the scale a little bit. And let's pick black. Black. Oh, I should have done that. There we go. Increase the skill and again add a mask. There we go. Let's increase the scale a little bit more. Okay, let's go to our height. And oh, let's change this one to normal. 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 Let's 
see what the rubber was again. I think this one. Is it? No. No. Hmm. Oh. Let's just leave it like this, and I'm gonna in one more time. I'm gonna export all channels. I'm gonna go for Unity Five Metallic. Pick my folder, which is in my documents. And export. Oh, just there is PNG. That was not that helpful. Uh, it's in here. So we got the Albedo one. Uh, emission, the text movers, and normal. So let's fire up Unity. Unity 5, this one. And let's see what it looks like inside Unity itself. <laughs> 